What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another Cataclysm Classic reaction video. We are about one month into Cataclysm right now, and it's time to take a look at how people have been responding to the Cataclysm expansion. Are you enjoying it? Are you hating it? Are you still playing? Have you just joined? Let me know your thoughts on Cataclysm so far in the comments down below. The common consensus that I keep hearing both in the game from my friends, on Discord and in my guild, is that people seem to be enjoying it a lot more than they thought they would. Even people coming into Catholicism with a reserved mindset, even a lot of they are having way more fun than they thought they would. And the common consensus that I feel like is happening here is that people are just enjoying Catholicism more than they were expecting. Me, myself, I knew I was gonna have a good time in Catholicism because I remember how it was back in the day, and I've always been really fond of this expansion, and it hasn't really disappointed so far either. Either way, today we were reacting to a video made by Meta Goblin on this topic, which is um, basically a Cataclysm review. I played Cataclysm Classic for a hundred hours. Is it as bad as everyone said? I feel like that's that title is kind of similar to a previous title he did, where he um, basically I played Cataclysm for a hundred hours to see if it's as bad as everyone says. So um, basically the same kind of thing. But in a review this time, after playing the Cataclysm Classic instead of a private server. So let's check it out, let's see what he has to say and let's see if uh, his thoughts reflect my own on Cataclysm. Either way, let's get into it, so I'm going to make this full screen and we'll take a look at it. Once again, let me know your thoughts on Cataclysm in the comments down below. I would love to hear, have you been having a good time, a bad time? And were you entering the expansion expecting it to be good or bad? Let me know in the comments. So apparently, according to the Classic WoW community, Cataclysm is the worst expansion in the existence of World of Warcraft, and if you play it, you'll go bald and your d will fall off. But how much <laughs> of that is really true? And how much of it is just the classic Andy mindset? Ooh. You know, the kind of person who would prefer to play a class that has a one bu you, you gotta be careful to not upset the classic Andys here by calling them the classic Andys. Button rotation. And there's only like two or three viable DPS options. Ooh. Well, over the past few weeks, I've really stuck my teeth into Cataclysm Classic. There's definitely some things I love and other things that I absolutely despise. Okay. So grab a beer and let's get into it. We're going to cover these topics. Endgame content, leveling content, character progression, class design, and lastly, some final thoughts. Now, fortunately, during my Cataclysm journey, I have had a pretty hectic IRL life with some pretty storylines. So suffice to say, this is it. let's try that one again. So suffice to say, I've had to approach the game as a casual Andy. Or I, I love that he kept that in. <laughs> That's great. I do those all the time. <laughs> unable to commit to a raid schedule. But despite that, and despite not being in the guild, I've been able to complete the majority of the end game content, proving that Cat Classic is definitely very casual friendly. I've easily got myself into organised pod groups on Discord on the days that best suited me. And by the end of week 2, I was actually able to acquire an average item level of 350. Ooh. Although it probably would be way higher than that if I wasn't still running around with a normal dungeon weapon. Yes, I'm not making that up. By the way guys, if you're still levelling up your character at Alts in Season of Discovery, Cataclysm or Error, be sure to check out the Rustic Speed add-on, the fastest levelling add-on that you can get created by world record holding speed levellers. You can find the download link to that in the description. Raids on normal mode are very approachable. I don't think I've wiped more than once on a boss, even in very questionable pug groups from the LFG chat where you seriously question whether the group is going to give you any more grey hairs. The only boss that is difficult to pug is Nefarian, which makes sense. You do need a lot of genuine coordination between the tank and an assistant to help kite those ads. Yeah. And a fight is a big DPS check. But this is fine. It's the final boss of the phase. It shouldn't be an easy guaranteed kill and only a small challenge. Heroic mode, however, is not as approachable. You do not get guaranteed kills on heroic mode yet. You don't see many pugs attempting more than a couple of bosses on heroic mode. Still only 
160 guilds have completed all the content on Heroic as I'm recording this video. And of all Nefari- There's actually been that many? That is actually more than I thought would um, complete Heroic. When you say complete Heroic, is that all the bosses on Heroic? If so, that is way more guilds than I thought there would be. Nefarian is probably the hardest boss here. It actually looks like Bastion of Twilight is giving groups more of a challenge than the Blackwing Descent bosses. I think the difficulty level of Cataclysm Raids is finally where we get the perfect balance of casual friendly content and difficult content yep. for the more hardcore players. Casual players are able to enjoy the endgame content playing on normal difficulty and slowly eventually they will start progressing through heroic when I will say Ice Crown Citadel as well was really good for the uh, difficulty of both being able to be a casual player and a hardcore player as well. Because, let's be real, the, some of the bosses on Heroic in Ice Crown Citadel, they were, they were really heroic, they were really hard. And uh, many of them on normal, they were very easy, we even had like a free boss with a loot ship. So for the most part, I feel ICC did a good part here as well, of keeping it, like giving casual players a good way to enjoy the content and also giving hardcore players a good way to enjoy the content. But Cataclysm just builds even further upon that. When they get better gear from normal mode, and the hardcore players are able to enjoy more difficult content straight away. Whereas in the past, especially in vanilla and TBC, we had raid tiers that were too easy for hardcore players, like Naxxramas and Wrath of the Lich King, or tiers too difficult for casual players like Sunwell in TBC. The normal and heroic difficulty divide creates a balance to please the varying skill levels of MMO players. And the raids themselves are top tier content, particularly on heroic mode, when the mechanics become a little bit more technical. It feels very satisfying to finally get a boss kill that you've been working on for a couple of hours. The variety of raid options also feels much better than just having to stay in the same raid for weeks on end. The TBC launch also did this, whereas in Wrath, we had to sit in a raid that we'd already done. Each raid is a very unique vibe and environment, and the best part about them is how they convey a splash of vanilla nostalgia, especially in Blackwing Descent. Yeah. This generally feels like a continuous raid from Blackwing Lair, the entrance to the raid is even inside the original Nefarian boss room. You really can't fault the endgame content in Cataclysm, it's only an improved and more refined version of Wrath raiding, it's a shame so many classic plays have been too stubborn to try it out, because it will probably be one of the best phases of this expansion. So if you look at this script, when I originally wrote it... I, I personally think Phase 3 is going to be the best one by far, because Firelands, Molten Front, like everything about Firelands is just so good, so when Phase 3, when, when Firelands becomes available, that's like what I'm really looking forward to. Sure, Phase 1 is great, the raids you have access to in Phase 1 is great, but Firelands though? Firelands is where it's at man. Firelands is going to be great. The legendary staff as well, oh yeah. And the boss fights, even heroic Ragnaros, it's so much fun and such a cool boss. I remember progressing on that back in the day. We never got it down, but we did progress on it and it was really fun. Minus all the spelling mistakes, ignore that. I mean, I don't proofread my scripts, obviously. No one ever sees them until today. Anyway, when I originally wrote the script, I was commenting on how the population numbers aren't that great. But when I had another look today, to be honest, they're much better than I thought. Yep. I've always predicted that Cata Classic will get off-peak TBC Classic numbers, and it's actually in the mid-range of TBC Classic off-peak numbers. 300k have been logged on Warcraft logs, comparatively Sod only got 50k right now, but peaked an average of 400k, and Wrath got an average peak number in a ballpark of 500k. So the numbers are actually way better than I thought they were going to be, and before people start dooming those numbers, Classic Cataclysm alone still has a higher population than most other competitor MMOs. But, there is a serious problem with Cata raiding. The content itself is perfect, but the way that raid lockouts work doesn't do it any favours. So in Wrath we had 10 mans, with a separate lockout to 25 mans. But in Cata Classic, 10 man mode, 25 man mode, heroic and normal, all have the same lockout, with the exception of Baradin's Hold. Not that I ever get into Baradin's Hold to check that, because I'm a Death Knight. I don't understand why they've done this, because they've essentially created less content for no real reason. 10 and 25 man, at the very least, should be a separate lockout, so there's an actual incentive to do 25 man raiding. The second chance to get the loot again will keep 25 man raid content relevant. 
which I know a lot of players definitely want. 25 man feels like a proper raid, 10 man doesn't really. The only advantage of this system is that it's way more casual friendly. With less bosses to kill and get loot from, the easier it is for casual players to keep up with the more hardcore players, but in the later phases, if they're going to add Gamma Dungeons, then keeping up won't be a problem anyway for players. I you know, I, I see both sides here, I see what he's saying as well, but because by adding, so we have separate lockouts, you would literally double the content that you have available, by instead of doing the raids once, you do the raids twice, but that also makes the raids go from being fun to boring really fast, and also makes them go from being fun to repetitive very fast, so it just makes you bored of the content way faster. It also makes you gear up faster and get into your end goals faster, and once you're at the end goal, you also get bored faster. So being able to do the raids twice instead of once, is just a high way to bore them before the phase is over. Now. One point that I want to make here when it comes to the raid lockouts is I think it's good that you have to choose. I think this is a good change that you either go for 10 man or 25 man. It makes you focus your guild recruitment based on what you have chosen. If you're only doing 10 man, you're focusing on recruiting for 10 man. And if you're doing 25, you're focusing on recruiting for that as well. Now, if they made it so that raid lockouts, you could do both. Now, suddenly, 25 man guilds, they all want to do 10 man, but... 25 divided by 10, you would only have enough for two full teams and then a five pug team. How do you determine who will be on the five, like who will be left out every single week? If you're a 25 man guild in this case, you if you could do 10 man and 25 man, obviously you would and you would want to. Suddenly, five people in the guild will feel left out every single week, unless you make like a rule that you rotate this so everyone gets left out eventually. If it's the same five people every single time, that creates the instance of them feeling like they're not part of the core guild. So that could lead to a lot of problems inside the guilds. And I feel like that would just cause way more problems and frustrations than it's worth. Now, if we had 10 man and 20 man, that problem would go away. But for now, we have 10 man and 25 man, so that problem persists. Just think, giving players less stuff to do in the long run, in my humble opinion, it's risky business. I've always thought that Classic WoW was such a wasted opportunity for Blizzard because they haven't bothered to add any more new raid content. It's why the game will always have a seasonal population, it's never really going to properly grow. <laughs> Now, leveling is very different at Car Classic. It's a totally different style to vanilla, and I understand why people don't like it. Vanilla, it's all about the adventure and the journey of exploring a new world, whereas Car Classic is much more fast placed and linear. In vanilla, there were long quest lines. Sometimes they sprawled across multiple zones, where in Kata, each zone has a quest line that guides you to every single quest hub in the area. Honestly, questing has adopted this style since TVC, with every expansion it's become even more linear, and on retail it's on a totally different level, where you just follow one storyline. The advantage of this is that the questing process can focus more on storytelling, and the lore of the zone that you're in, and communicating that to the player. But you feel like the developers are holding your hand, and many MMO players simply don't like that style of questing, or really care about a game's story anyway. There is just something about that old vanilla world that is sometimes hard to describe and justify. Yeah, it's a long grind and there's usually a lot of walking involved when trying to complete a quest, but there's something satisfying about it. Another quality of vanilla quest design is the difficulty, particularly when it comes to group quests. For most classes, taking on three enemies is a death sentence, encouraging players to group up and make friends in order to progress. But in Kata, when you're decked out in looms, honestly, mobs just drop within a couple of globals and you barely ever lose any mana. The sense of danger from the open world is non-existent, and you feel like a god when you hit level 10, before you've even got to the end game. And it's a shame because they definitely improved the quest from being simple, pick this item up, kill this mob, to more creative ideas. But the core values of what made a vanilla leveling journey aren't there anymore. It's still a fun journey. But it's fun in a different way for different reasons. But the thing is, most people playing Kata Classic don't care about the vanilla vibes anyway. They just want good quality end game content. So the leveling should be a short, sweet, and simple process. Majority of players won't even go into the open world and just queue Dungeon Finder instead anyway. 
I mean, I just logged into my alt at Razor mm. Hill and I only saw one person AFK at the Flightmaster. In vanilla, no matter what phase you're in, there's always a few people at every single quest hub. But to be fair, at least... But we're also... We're five years into Classic WoW now. It's not like... It's not like Cataclysm launched fresh. We have been playing these servers for five years, and we're at the point now where a lot of people just are not leveling new characters, because we have been playing this for five years, so people leveled up alts in Classic WoW, TBC, Wrath, and now we're in Cataclysm. A bunch of people like myself, I have 20 level 80s from Wrath that I'm now going into Cataclysm with. So for me, there's no incentive to level up anyone from level 1, unless I really want to experience the, like the zones, which I've experienced before. So unless you're a brand new person jumping into Cataclysm, there's no real incentive to level up more characters from scratch. I think a lot of people are in that boat where they already have the classes they want to have at max level. They have at max level, or they at least have them at level 80, right, from Wrath. Because even in Wrath, we had a lot of events happening that gave us a bonus experience that people took advantage of. I don't remember the names of them, but we had like the, was it Joyous Journeys? We had the joyous journeys, right? Giving you bonus experience. So a leveling period in Wrath to help you level faster. So we just had a bunch of events over the years, I've been playing here for 5 years, people have leveled up characters, which means they have less characters to level up now, and that also means the old world will be less relevant, because we're playing Cataclysm, we're also in the first month of Cataclysm, people want to do Cataclysm content, not old world content. So even brand new people jumping in here, they are really enticed to buy a level 80 boost and just get right into the Cataclysm content. Razor Hill does now have some class trainers, that is a godsend. The Dungeon Finder was the ultimate open world killer, is why I've never been a huge fan of it, but I'm going to keep my opinions about Dungeon Finder to myself before I get put on a stake. I've always <laughs> thought that once you complete the Dungeon Finder, it should give you a double XP buff for an hour or two, but only for open world levelling. That way the open world at least somewhat stays alive. Ironically, the reason why they added cross-server open world to the game was to resurrect the open world, but even that didn't work because it's so much easier to just chill in Orgrimmar Stormwind and keep a dungeon finder. Now, character progression is very important in an RPG, MMO or not, and developers have to make it interesting, satisfying, but not boring. In Cataclysm, there's a number of ways to progress your character. Talents, gear, gems, enchants, reputation enchants, and profession bonuses. And the new progression system is reforging. Overall, your progression doesn't feel too grindy. The most grindy element is leveling your professions, which can sometimes be done very inexpensively, if not for free, if you do it smartly. I'll actually have a video about that coming very soon. Reforging is a system where you can customize the stats on your gear. Most of the time, you are just reforging the stats into your best stats, but it makes that hit cap much easier and stress free to obtain. You will very likely not have to turn up to your raid with multiple different gear options in your bags for different group setups. You can quickly just go and get a reforge. I also like it because if for instance I want to go solo some raids, I'll just go and reforge full into mastery and respec into blood to make it much easier. People who dual spec healer and DPS can usually just do a quick reforge to make themselves competent in a raid. They won't have to go out there and farm an entire new offset. Obviously farming an offset will be better, but if you need it quickly for the guild raid, then bosh, you can just go and reforge and you're sorted. After trying a few classes in Cataclysm, it's obvious that Blizzard were trying their hardest to make every class feel exciting to play with their big cooldowns, rotations and fun abilities. Everyone criticises the talent system for being stripped down, but it doesn't really feel that way because of all the extra glyphs they added, and so many classes got reworked to have new and interesting systems, like Paladin, Spreece, Warlock, Hunter, Druid having their resources revamped with things like Holy Power, Shadow Orbs, and a Balanced Druid Eclipse Bar. Classes have much more nuance, a little technicality in order for you to master them, and I've personally always found this to be a little bit more engaging than spamming the same button over and over again like we did in vanilla and TBC. But I do understand that some people do prefer simplicity. But 
the end of the day, I don't think Cataclysm Classics are that dramatically overcomplicated to the point where we couldn't call them simple. Yeah, some of I mean, am I alone here in feeling like the Cataclysm Classes are very similar to what they were in Wrath? With like, one or two more abilities to press? Some classes have been re reworked a little bit, but for the most part, I feel like they're somewhat um, recognisable to what they were in Wrath. Now, obviously, some major changes there, like combustion to mages, and a bunch of other things as well that spiked things up a little bit, and some classes being better on the DPS meters now due to scaling and also the abilities they have, but for the most part, I feel like the classes are um, somewhat recognisable to their Wrath counterpart, and I just I haven't noticed this huge change in classes that I keep hearing people talk about. To me, it just feels like I'm still playing classic WoW, like in Wrath, but a continuation of it being level 85, killing different mobs with like two or more abilities to press, and um, I'm having fun. I don't know. I feel I feel like, I feel like class design in Cataclysm is feeling good. And one thing I do want to say when it comes to class design, though, is that they seem to have been redesigning a bunch of classes to Builder Spender. This counts for Holy Paladins, for example, Builder Spender. So you have you have something that builds up a resource, and then you have something that spends a resource. Think about rogues using energy and then building up combo points to then spend the combo points. Think about paladins and their holy power and building up holy power, power, holy power to then spend the holy power. Same thing for all paladins, by the way, not just holy paladins, but all paladins. A builder spender seems to be the same thing for a lot of classes now where they have that builder spender mentality. So um, that that's like one big change for me when it comes to class design is that they're focusing on making everyone a builder spender. More harder than others, but there's definitely quite a big part of them which are just very easy to pick up and get going. Realistically, Cata Classic isn't classic anymore, but there's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, it's Raphalich King with dragons. If you enjoyed raiding in Wrath, then the Kata raiding experience isn't going to be that much yeah. different. You'll probably enjoy it. But it's important to understand that it's a different game now. Honestly, it's kind of futile to criticise Cataclysm on what it isn't. It's more productive to criticise it on what it is. Fortunately, it seems like Blizzard want to provide a... One of the problems I have is that a lot of people seem to use Classic in the whole the wrong way, but then again, the wrong way is also subjective. What I think is, is that Classic as a term here will always be subjective, because Cataclysm is Classic, because Blizzard made Classic, and they launched Cataclysm Classic. They decide where Classic starts and where it ends, it's up to them, not us, but for the subjective part, for some people, Classic is only literally Vanilla WoW, because that's the only Classic Classic, and for some people, Classic is only Vanilla WoW and TBC, and for some people, Classic is only Vanilla WoW, TBC and Wrath. I think that's the boat that most people are in. Now for me, Classic stopped being Classic in Vanilla, when they introduced the level boosts with the TBC Deluxe Editions, because to me the word classic meant the way it was back in the day with no additional changes, so to me classic as the term lost its value when they put in level boosts, WoW tokens, other things on the store, like for example the paid mounts, which you got through bundles, so you had like the, um, I don't know what the name was, but like the, the Viridian Shapeshifter or something like that, you know the mount from the TBC Deluxe Editions, and they also had the Wrath mount as well, for example, and the level boost in both TBC and in Wrath. So level boost, WoW tokens, paid mounts, and now we have like paid toys as well and paid everything, so, like so many microtransactions that was not there back in the day. Like WoW tokens were not available until Warlords of Draenor, right? Not even at the start, at the end of Warlords, WoW tokens became available. So a lot of these things, that's what broke Classic to me. So I just feel like Classic in itself is a kind of subjective term where Blizzard decides where objectively the Cataclysm or like where the Classic line ends but subjectively, it ended for a lot of people at different times. For me, it lost its value and Classic Classic stopped when they introduced the WoW tokens and level boost. So level boost, that was when TBC was announced, and we got the TBC pre patch with level 58 boost. Classic stopped being Classic then for me. And for some people, it kept going because they didn't care, and it ended when Arthas died in Wrath. 
subjective. Continuing old school MMO product to keep the classic Andes happy. They just kind of f***ed that one up with Season of Discovery. We'll talk about that in my next video, but it was an experiment, and at least Blizzard are doing something. At heart, Cataclysm is a fast-paced theme park MMO heavily focused on challenging endgame group content, and it certainly delivers that alongside great high fantasy vibes and lore. But the raid lockout system seriously needs some work, I hope Blizzard actually do change something about it, but it's probably very unlikely. I hope not. I fundamentally don't understand why Blizzard decided to release Kata with an inferior lockout system, but they later scrapped and reworked. Raid lockouts in Kata are worse than previous expansions and the following expansions. They have needlessly created... I strongly disagree on this one, but then again, that's, um, that's my opinion versus his opinion. I strongly disagree. I think raid lockouts right now in Cataclysm is way better than they were in Classic WoW, TBC, and Wrath. That's just me, though. ...rated less content. Fair enough, Kata does feel a little bit like playing retail, but at least the center community on your server is still an actual thing. On retail, you can use a raid finder and premiered group finder to complete all of the content, and it's all cross-server. There's no real point in servers anymore on retail. But in Kata, you still need to group up with people on your server in order to complete the content. There's a larger incentive to get to know people and join a guild, and there's still a level of player and guild reputation on your server, but social MMO element isn't totally lost yet. For some classic fans, it's simply not going to be their cup of tea, and that's fine. It's not an old school MMO anymore, it doesn't have that kind of vibe. This is very obvious when you look at the recent fresh vanilla server movement. These people don't even want to play Season of Discovery. They just want to play vanilla yet again, exactly how it was. Which is interesting, I'll be covering that in another video very soon. I f believe nothing speaks more volumes about how stale the MMO market is right now than so many people wanting to go back and play a 20-year-old version of World of Warcraft <laughs> yet again. Yeah. And that's not a diss on those players, because I'm going to be making a character soon. That's just a diss on MMO developers. But until that adventure begins, my name is Meta Goblin. until my next video, ciao. That was a good video and a very good review for Cataclysm as a whole, and I love how he covered this in the chapters, talking about endgame, leveling, and uh, class design and all of those things separately, and uh, giving us kind of a timeline at the start as well, very good. And I agree with mostly everything, but there's a couple of things, like for example the classic term, I talked about this quite a bit, so I'm not going to cover it again, but the classic term I disagree with, because Cataclysm is classic, but for some people the whole classic term is very subjective, and for some people it ended at different points. Some people it ended when Wrath came out, some people it ended when WoW tokens were available, like in Wrath as well, like midway through Wrath, right? Some people it ended, for me for example, when TBC bundle came out and introduced level boosts, and also paid mounts, that kind of threw it in the bin. So subjectively, Cat Classic is like on, it ended so many different places for different people for different reasons. And objectively, Cataclysm is called Classic by Blizzard. It's their product and they decide where it ends. But um, also I disagree on the raid lockout. I think having to choose between 10 and 25 man is a good. And if you would have the options of doing both, you would also like, first of all, having the option to do both would be good. But you would also feel compelled to do, to do both, because you want to get that much loot. Because if you can do the raid twice, you will want to do the raid twice. Having options is good, feeling forced to do the raid twice is bad. And you also get to your goals faster, you get bored faster, and you get bored of the content, aka the raid, even faster. It's just a way to speed up the game, which we already have the increased uh, cadence of Cataclysm. It's already being sped up, we don't need to speed it up even more. Either way, based on what I've heard so far in Catalysm, the common take is that it seems to be a, a, that a lot of people find it more fun than they were expecting. So once again, let me know your Catalysm review in the comments down below, whether it's going to be a short one or a long one. I would love to read what you think about Catalysm, so once again, comments down below. If you enjoyed the reaction today, leave a like down below as well, and thank you so much for watching the video, I really do appreciate it, and I will see you again very soon.